This is Mario with MIA Microflight and this is going to be one of those videos on home repair. Uh, this unit right here went uh, out. Uh, the typical noises uh, that you hear you know at the back that have to do with relays, control relays. Right now it's working because I repaired the control board and I also did a little hack on the one of the relays that is connected to the compressor. As you can see this is back to normal temperature. It's a little bit low by one degree here. Normally it's 37 Fahrenheit on the refrigerator side. Uh, freezer is typically zero. So, but this is working fine. I had this, uh, I had to wait overnight for the temperature to set in after doing what I'm going to show you in this video here. So the first thing that I did was the typical analysis of the compressor side here and sure enough the relay that connects to the back of this unit there's a relay and there's a um, uh, thermal um, I think it's a uh, some kind of a protector there overload protector that's part of that relay assembly including the separate in this case it's a separate capacitor that is installed at the base of the this uh, unit here uh, I checked those items the capacitor Capacitor, capacitor is a 15 microfarad capacitor, which is this unit right here. That checked out just fine. And the relay there, uh, I opened it up and I cleaned the contacts because it is a mechanical type relay. Some relays are not mechanical. They're, they have a, um, a, lit, uh, a PC board. You know, it's more uh, an electronic uh, device than, than a mechanical device. In this case, this one was mechanical. I cleaned it, which is, uh, I, I really like that you know those features in some devices you know the easier to repair easier to, you know so i just clean the contacts on that the relay and put it right back on however i was still getting a clicking here on this uh, on this side right here so i opened this up and started looking into the control board i checked that i was getting a voltage here ac voltage on this side here so the high voltage section was working just fine the low voltage section, however, was not there. Uh, and the way I check the low voltage is, uh, you know, this requires 12 volts. Of course, uh, the PC board also requires 5 volts, but we're concerned with the uh, this connector here, J2. And I'm kind of going over this quickly. I'm not going into the other connectors because these are the typical things that go uh, that you should check. And, and, uh, and some of the components that I'm going to show that typically go bad. So the clicking was coming from this device right here, which is the relay that uh, switches the the, um, uh, the high voltage onto the compressor and the compressor fan, which is the, um, in this case, it's a condenser fan. The uh, uh, This relay, uh, so I took out the uh, board completely uh, out of the system right here. Of course, you, you got to work without uh, the AC line connected. You know that's obvious looked at the board and this particular section on this uh, uh, um, uh, on the underside of this board this had a sort of a burn mark on one of the pins there looked like from excessive current and that typically happens when you have a high voltage switching all the time which is what this relay is doing so um i replaced i decided to re just replace that uh relay and i also replaced two capacitors here these two right here which have to do with the uh w with a voltage section that uh, feeds the fans typically that's 12 to 13 volts dc uh and the reason i replaced this is because after putting a uh, meter on this um on this connector here on pins eight and three three is the common for the dc volts and the, and the eight I wasn't getting 12 to 13 volts DC, which is what you're supposed to get typically if the low voltage section of this control board is working. And so I decided to replace these capacitors because this is the, the section that, that feeds that. Uh, the other thing that I also um, uh, checked was this resistor here. That resistor right there is a R6, and that is actually a 33K ohm resistor. That was a little, uh, that had signs of overheated uh, on the surface of the resistor, so I thought that one was bad, and I actually took it out of the out of the board, tested it with a meter, and it was reading 33k, still holding on. So I decided to just put it back on. 
the excess heat also has to do with uh, you know this section here because this is on the high high end side on the high, high voltage high voltage meaning 110 volts AC this has to do with the DC line so once I replace this in those two capacitors I was able to uh, get back the, the 12 volt DC on this uh, on this connector here which that in turn feeds the the fans you know you have two fans here uh, you have an evaporator fan which is inside this uh, refrigerator and the condenser fan which is that fan right there that uh, that, that that is on typically when the, the system is is running right now it's it's uh, it turned off because the system is constantly cycling you know when the refrigerator starts warming up and it starts to uh, require uh, uh, the cooling um, then the compressor kicks in the fan kicks in it was just running a little while ago so uh, it is working and so those are the things that I, I replaced here and um, and so far it's been working just fine just to keep this video nice and nice and short uh, I kind of uh, did a, a little sketch here of the things that I replaced you can see that's the relay that's actually a 12 volt DC relay not that it's feeding 12 volts DC to switching to, to uh, 12 volts DC but it's actually driven by 12 volts DC this is a DC to AC um, uh, uh, relay here. It's controlled via 12 volts DC. And if you're not getting 12 volts DC here, or you're not getting, you know, the proper 12 volts, you know, this is not going to, to switch this at all. You know, so you need that, that control system, which is driven, of course, by the, the computer inside this, this board here. So, um, uh, so I replaced that. Like I was saying, those are the two capacitors that I replaced. Those are 470 microfarad, 25 volts. I got those overnight to me, and so I was able to get this uh, back and running. Of course, I had to take all the food. I actually caught this on time because of those noises that I was hearing, and it was it was happening the day before, and I I, I kind of sensed that uh, this this something was not going going right here. And sure enough, uh, yesterday when this happened, early in the morning, I uh, immediately uh, you know, noticed that, and and I decided to relocate all the food to another fridge that I have as a, as a spare, you know, emergency fridge. And so um, I can work on this. But those are the, the two things, the, those are the two things that I replace. And typically that's what you should replace. Also, if you have a similar issue here, uh, check into those, those things, but make sure you test to see if you're getting voltages on, the, on, these, uh, on this J2. If you're not getting this voltage here, that's a sure sign that you're Low end power supply is not working typically when it deals with power supply issues. You know the capacitors are, are the culprit uh, devices that tend to tend to go in. Especially if, if you had a device you know for running for over years. This happens with TVs, anything that has a power supplies and computers. This happens all the time, and typically it's the capacitors that uh, tend to dry up. And one sure sign is if you look at the capacitor on the surface, if it's a little bulged up or has a kind of kind of a, a, a convex surface you know, you know that that's, that's about to go or it has gone uh, bad. And so in, in this case, sure enough, those capacitors were the, uh, were the issue here. So this is what I did to my, my system here. I do have another video on how I hack, did a little hack to the relay there. I mainly took, took it apart and cleaned the contact points on, on that and that uh, that's been working just fine. So I'm sort of leaving this open I'm going to leave it open for another day just to make sure that this is uh, working, it's cycling just fine for another day. And that uh, will reassure me that this uh, fridge is, is working just fine. Once again, you know, that's maintaining 0 and 36. I can go 1 inch, 1, one inch, one, um, 1 degree higher to set it to the recommended 37 uh, temperature. And that should be just fine right there. So we'll just leave it right there. Everything's working. Um, this light right here is, um, is something that I'm going to have to order this switch right here because I, I've had this for, uh, for, you know, a, a quite a while like, like this, you know, just with this tape right here, kind of cheesy. Um, I did this and I actually forgot about this, you know, when I did this, uh, this, uh, this quick uh, fix here, but as you can see, it's just a, just a piece of tape or a piece of foam that's, uh, pressing up against the, 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 the little switch lever inside the switch, but I'm, I'm actually going to replace that um, since I'm working on this and just take care of it for once and for all. But if this is if this is shut off, the, the fridge starts, uh, uh, should work just fine. You know, the, the cold air should, should be in here and it's, and it's cold. But if this is open, if this is open inside, you know, the, the uh, 
the um, the fridge is not going to cool off and it's going to get warm. So that's the that's the risk you know that you have with the switch that's not operating properly. But right now this is this is off, and I, I'm going to keep it off like that, uh, just under pressure and, and uh, with that piece of tape there until I can uh, get the uh, switch that that I ordered you know from uh, from Amazon. So uh, yeah, it's working just fine, and. Uh, you know, this, by the way, is a GE profile. It's been a great uh, fridge for many, many years. And, um, you know, it's things that, uh, things that, that, you know, you can do, you know, with just a little know-how. There are many, many videos online that you can go online and, and just uh, look um, uh, and, and, and see if this is not your problem. I'm pretty sure you'll find, some, you know, somebody that has uh, similar problems. But this is mainly what happens, you know, with these things. And so, at the uh, at the root, basic basic uh, uh, troubleshooting, uh, this is this is basically what what happens, you know, with these uh, devices. Mario, once again, thanks for watching.